This week's successful Flight 11 didn't just mark the end of an era for SpaceX's Starship, it was a flawless closing chapter before the program takes a massive technological leap forward. The launch served as a powerful demonstration of the incredible progress made through a rapid, iterative testing campaign. This relentless test, fly, fail, fix, repeat philosophy, while unconventional, has allowed SpaceX to perfect the complex systems of the world's largest rocket at an unprecedented pace, setting the stage for an even more ambitious future. While the flight itself was the most perfect test to date, achieving all its major objectives with remarkable precision, the bigger story is the completely new generation of hardware set to replace every component of the system we have seen so far. This transition signals a move from the initial proof-of-concept phase, where the primary goal was simply surviving the ascent, to a new operational era. This next stage will feature vehicles designed not just for testing, but for the grueling demands of reliability, rapid reusability, and deploying massive payloads for missions like Starlink, the Artemis program, and eventually Mars colonization. First, however, Flight 11 demonstrated the system's current maturity. The launch featured a super-heavy booster that had previously flown on Flight 8 in March 2025, proving the concept of rapid reusability is not just theoretical, but practical. Seeing a previously flown booster lift off again so soon is a monumental step towards the airline-like operation SpaceX has long targeted, a stark contrast to the months or even years of refurbishment required for previous reusable spacecraft like the Space Shuttle. After a period of intensive refurbishment at the Staractory, SpaceX's futuristic production facility, this booster, still utilizing 24 of its original Raptor engines from its first mission, performed a beautiful ascent into the evening sky. The work done between flights, a process of inspecting, repairing, and replacing components, is critical to understanding the long-term viability and maintenance cycles required for a fully reusable launch system. This data is invaluable for building a system that is not only capable, but also economically sustainable. The booster executed a perfect hot-stage separation, a complex and visually stunning maneuver where the Starship's second-stage engines ignite before the booster has fully detached. This technique, made possible by a vented interstage ring, minimizes gravity losses by ensuring continuous thrust throughout staging. It saw the upper stage cleanly push away to continue its journey into space while the booster began its own carefully choreographed descent. During its descent over the Gulf of Mexico, the booster trialed a new hot stage separation procedure as no tower catch was attempted for this mission. This water-based test provided a low-risk environment to gather crucial data on a flight profile that will be essential for future, more powerful boosters, allowing engineers to push the vehicle's limits without endangering the vital launch tower infrastructure. Instead of the standard 13-3 to engine burn sequence used on previous flights, it tested a more complex 13-5-3 to to engine shutdown pattern. This tiered approach, akin to a multi-stage braking system, allows for greater precision and control in the final moments of descent. It balances the need for powerful deceleration from supersonic speeds with the fine-tuned positioning required to hit a specific target. SpaceX confirmed this is a preparatory test for the next-generation V3 booster. This fuel-saving maneuver conserves propellant during landing, maximizing the amount available for future ascents. Every kilogram of fuel saved on landing is another kilogram that can be used to increase payload performance, directly translating to more mass delivered to orbit, a critical metric for a rocket of this scale. Meanwhile, in space, the Starship vehicle achieved all its primary objectives, maintaining flawless control and stability on its suborbital path around the globe. Using its small nitrogen gas reaction control thrusters for orientation in the vacuum of space, the ship held its attitude perfectly throughout its coast phase. This level of precision is a critical requirement for future missions involving payload deployment or the millimeter-perfect orbital refueling needed for interplanetary journeys. The vehicle's control flaps, which have been at point of failure on previous flights due to issues with melting and hydraulics, flawlessly withstood the extreme aerodynamic stresses 
and intense heat of atmospheric re-entry. The success of these massive actively controlled surfaces, which act as both wings and heat shields, is a testament to the engineering refinements and material science advancements made throughout the test program. This resilience enabled the ship to perform its first ever dynamic banking maneuver at T plus 58 minutes into the mission. This crucial steering test, conducted at an altitude of 50 kilometers, is vital for developing the capability for future attempts to navigate the ship from its re-entry point all the way back to the Starbase launch site. By using its body and flaps to generate aerodynamic lift, Starship effectively flew, rather than just fell, through the upper atmosphere, demonstrating a cross-range capability essential for precise landings from a variety of orbital trajectories. Later in the flight, the ship practiced its final alignment maneuver, a dramatic 180-degree spin that oriented it correctly before it flipped vertically for its simulated landing burn. This signature belly flop and flip, designed to mimic a skydiver, uses the ship's massive surface area as a brake against the atmosphere, scrubbing off immense kinetic energy before the final powered descent. It splashed down perfectly on target near a camera buoy before it tipping over and exploding, as was planned for this controlled water landing. The pinpoint accuracy of the landing, even after performing complex aerial maneuvers miles above the Earth, was the final confirmation of the vehicle's incredible control authority and the maturity of its guidance, navigation, and control software. This flight was the last of its kind. Starting with Flight 12, everything about the Starship system is set to change. The ship, the booster, and the launch pad. This flight represents the pinnacle of the V-2 design, which will now give way to a far more capable and robust V-3 system, marking a definitive shift from development to operations. The next generation Super Heavy Booster will feature a new look and significantly more power. It will be equipped with 33 of the new Raptor V3 engines, which not only increase thrust from 230 tons to 280 tons, but are also radically simplified. This new design eliminates much of the complex external plumbing and wiring, common failure points in rocketry in favor of a cleaner, more reliable engine that is also faster and cheaper to manufacture. The booster itself will be elongated to hold larger fuel tanks necessary to feed the thirstier engine's higher propellant flow rate. These tanks will be supplied by a massive internal transfer tube for liquid methane that is remarkably about the size of an entire Falcon 9 rocket. The top of the booster will also be radically different featuring only three larger and stronger grid fins instead of four, a change made possible by integrating the catch pin structure directly into the fins themselves, saving weight and complexity. Furthermore, the heavy 10 metric ton disposable interstage adapter is being eliminated. This component was previously jettisoned after use, but the new design favors an integrated hot stage connection with a reinforced tank dome. This innovation, which exposes the top of a fuel tank to a direct rocket blast, is a daring engineering feat that creates a truly sustainable and fully reusable system without discarding any hardware into the ocean. The Starship V3 vehicle, while visually similar to its predecessor, is receiving major internal upgrades focused on reliability. Engineers have incorporated lessons from every previous flight, completely redesigning the fuel delivery system to address issues that caused failures in the past. The goal is to build a vehicle robust enough for operational missions, from deploying the next generation of Starlink satellites to eventually carrying human crews. Finally, the launch pad itself, Stage Zero, is being upgraded. Flight 11 was the final launch from Tower 1 and its innovative but ultimately experimental water-cooled steel plate. The new Tower 2 will feature a more traditional flame trench and water deluge system, a stronger structure, and shorter, faster chopstick catch arms. This new ground system is designed for a higher launch cadence and quicker turnaround times, closing one chapter and paving the way for an even more exciting new era of Starship development. Enjoyed the episode? 
like and subscribe to Military Forces. For more in-depth content, your support helps us create more.